Hello, everybody. We have five, um, I think we've just a few attendees. So I'll just give us another minute in case yeah. others are joining. Um, my name is Margaret Madden. I work in uh, the admissions office um, in Maynooth University. I just want to welcome you to our uh, Maynooth University virtual spring open day. We are really sorry that we're not on our beautiful campus out in Maynooth, um, greeting you there, um, where the cherry blossoms and the flowers and the um, all the beautiful trees are in bloom. Um, so instead, because of the strange situation we find ourselves in, we are um, just um, meeting you via a live webinar. But I'm sure we will still connect with you and um, that you'll enjoy the talk. Um, we have Martin Ryan, who is our program director for product design at Maynooth, and he's going to do a presentation for you. And we also have um, one of our top students, um, Shane McCabe, who's a third year student, and he'll be able to give you some of the uh, student pers perspective. We have a Q&A box. If you have questions, we can deal with all your questions at the end of the presentation. You can type them up into the Q&A box if you wish, and I'll read them out to Martin at the end. There's also a raise hand option, um, which you can raise hand at the end of the presentation, and I um, will unmute your mic and you can ask a question directly either to Martin or Shane. So now I'm just going to hand you over to Martin and he'll um, start the presentation. Okay, Martin. Brilliant, um, thanks, Margaret. Can you see the, yeah. I can, yeah, and you can, my screen I trust is still shared okay, is it? Yeah. I can, yeah, see, I can it. see it, yeah. Brilliant, great. Thanks for that, Margaret. And okay. welcome everybody anyway to this introduction to um, course code MH305, which is for product design with marketing and innovation. So I'm, I suppose I'm going to address like, oh yeah, first I suppose who you're talking to. So as Margaret said, I'm the program director for the course um, and I've been in Minute now since the origin of the course. Um, I'm also uh, a small time entrepreneur. I've got my own business around my own product innovation which sells around the world um, and have collected various awards um, and active in research and an editor of Ireland's uh, only design journal. So the structure of the presentation I'm going to go through is an introduction to what is product design for those of you who I suppose are considering but may not know much about it um, and then break it down a little bit more detail as to the course structure, uh, the modules entailed within what is the design process? Because that is the kind of walk away transferable skill that you're going to have that can be applied to uh, many different industry sectors. Then what are, I suppose, the practical thing around what the entry requirements are. And then I'm going to give you some sample work that the students have engaged with. And then we're going to bring Shane in. Shane, Shane's actually a, a final year student uh, this year. And so he's just in the process of wrapping up his final project. So Shane is going to give a few words and then we're both available for question, questions at the end anyway. So a lot of people are more familiar with an architect um, because I suppose there's lots of TV programs covering architecture and a product designer is quite similar to an architect, but we're like an architect for almost all other, other types of products, small products in the home. It can be furniture, uh, electronic devices, and to that end, we also covered the digital side of it in terms of digital interfaces and some of the functioning program, basics of programming uh, around digital solutions such as apps. And design, it's all about taking technologies that have been developed and applying them in a meaningful way to solve a human problem, something that people need solved to make their life more enjoyable, to make it work better, uh, to make it easier, uh, more pleasant, whatever it may be, a benefit to people. So that's where humanity comes into it. And really understanding the needs of people is the challenge uh, that, that the skill set comes in to help you unlock and really understand the insightful needs around people. And ultimately, product designers design 
actually play a big role in your lives as it stands because there's so many products around you today that have been designed originally by a product designer. So there's lots of different industry sectors you might find yourself in and um, from basics product design, consumer electronics is obviously enormous uh, and it's only growing bigger all the time. Uh, furniture is a huge sector, both in Ireland, there's quite a number of prominent furniture companies and then abroad if you want to travel and work. Packaging, so like all the big pharma companies and um, all the cosmetics companies, everything and any food packaging, like all those areas are very big and prominent. Um, medical devices is huge. Like we've many of the world's top medical device companies based here in Ireland. And so that's again a prominent line of area and job opportunities. And then interface is be, is really interface and service design are probably the two biggest growth areas. And so if you think of the huge service sector and all those big tech companies coming to Ireland, a lot of what they offer has to be designed, how they engage the consumer, not just the physical things they design, but that kind of journey that a customer goes on as they engage with a Google interface or they engage with whatever it may be. It can be quite intangible stuff. All of that gets designed to create an experience, quality experience, so that people want to use their service again and again. But today I'm going to, I suppose, stick to the kind of basics example to kind of give you further understanding of what product design is. And so if we take two brushes, for example, and the opportunities that can be presented by approaching, taking a design approach to a, an existing product line. So by championing the user, by observing a user, how they brush their teeth, what are the little irritations they have uh, around that, you can always see new opportunities for new innovation that can be commercially successful. So for example, taking the humble toothbrush, you might go, well, they need to be kept upright. The head needs to be kept off the counter to keep it clean so that it's not you know, it's getting, sitting in stagnant water. So people often use a glass in the cup, but this designer thought, okay, let's design away the need for other implements to hold it up and just put a weighted base in the toothbrush. So again, that's a worthy solution. Then we've all had that issue of you know, getting that last bit out of the toothpaste, not wasting it. Um, and th this designer has identified that there's kind of redundant space that isn't doing much work in a toothbrush. So why not have a slot in that that it can help you lever out the, ex the last bits of toothpaste. Here's a little video that I hope will play okay. So you can see here, this is like an ergonomic approach. This is putting in some simple uh, electronics and motors to convert the water back up to the mouth so you don't have to uncomfortably bend under the tap. And then this element is recognizing, the removable top recognizes that we actually, we're in society today, we're obviously very conscious about sustainability and removing unnecessary waste. And to throw out a whole toothbrush because its bristles are worn out is unnecessary waste. So this designer was recognizing that and having it so that the just the head was interchangeable, which makes great sense. So, and you can go on and on. There's always opportunities in well-established product areas uh, and given the right approach to understand a new need. Uh, there's also opportunities around hugely successful product and product lines such as um, compact digital devices like iPads, smartphones. And sometimes the problem is you, you, know, you get that lovely iPad, it's nice and simple, you put it in a nice satchel bag to carry it around. But all of a sudden, when you live in the UK and Ireland, uh, you have to have this big clunky three pin plug with you to be able to power it up uh, as necessary. And so that sort of takes from that. So this designer, identified an opportunity just to serve that huge market that's already there with a peripheral we'd call it so a product kind of on the edge of a of a big new product platform you can you can have something that gets much more compact so this is a foldable three pin plug uh, which is done very well so i'm just going to play this little video this is a video last year's four years created that gave a little introduction to some of their projects and it's a nice little overview for about a minute Sorry, two minutes. Hi, 
My name is Damien Mulher. My name is Jack Dempsey. My name is Adam McDermott, and I'm a final year product design student here at Manute University. Product design to me is solving a problem. A problem that people previously may have overlooked or didn't think could be solved. It's about understanding who you're designing for and understanding their needs so that you can design an informed solution. I think when looking back at my time in true product design, I can look back very fondly. When I think of product design, there's a process of making things, drawing, solving problems or challenges. The diversity of all the projects this year was really amazing. There was so many problem areas addressed, like preventing food waste, sports psychology, agriculture, pet care, and so many more beyond these as well. My final year project definitely had to adapt during the COVID-19 pandemic. The opportunity to contact the lecturers, you know, once a week on the Microsoft Teams, but also you had to think of creative solutions yourself. It did, it did actually teach us a lot, I feel like, in the end. It was an entirely new environment to me. I wasn't used to working from home. Just kind of took the approach to, to get up every day, you know, grind it out and look for progress over perfection. Product design at Maynooth University is a great opportunity to meet other young, like-minded, creative people. And they're definitely people that will be kept in my circles for as long as I can. It was a fantastic experience all in all. Sorry. My name is Damien. Hi. My... No. So you can see there a sample of the diverse range of products where some of them have electronic components, some of the prototypes, you know, built working prototypes and um, from biodiversity to motorbike cycling safety. So intelligent sensors that tells you if you're likely to have a crash to fashion type items, wearables, packaging storage, it kind of goes everywhere. Um, and that is what many of the beauties of it, you will have an opportunity to explore projects that are in your passion area. And also, as was suggested, COVID threw up unique circumstances and the skill set you're going to learn positions you very well to understand, well, how do you kind of adjust and adapt and creatively make the most of the situation you're facing? And that's kind of like your future career, really. It's going to constantly change. The market is going to change. So you have to keep adapting. So in terms of the wider need in, in jo the jobs market for design, product design and design thinking as the core process, and this is a recent study from PwC, and they talk about design thinking now is the second most uh, popular option for the world's leading industry to use in terms of innovation. Uh, so it's becoming very, very fast. It's becoming almost the most popular approach to R&D. So it's got a huge growth. Also, most CEOs are saying that they're, the next competitive battleground is experience. So they're looking at every opportunity to create better experiences for their customers to differentiate them. Um, and so it, it helps retain customers. If customers get a bad experience, uh, sorry, uh, uh, something goes wrong with a positive service or experience around it, they're still more likely to come back to you. Uh, they're more likely to recommend you and, and all sorts of good business reasons. So that's where it's product, but it's also service and it's also digital. That's really important. Uh, and we encompass that whole system into it. With any new initiative, whether it's a new consumer product, a new startup company, most of them will fail. Uh, so this is a Harvard professor, 95% uh, of them fail according to some of his studies. 
So why do they fail? It's because people haven't understood and clarified the problem to be solved, right? So basically they're not solving a worthwhile problem. And Albert Einstein once said, if he had only an hour to save the world, he'd spend uh, the first 55 minutes defining the problem and then five minutes finding the solution. And that is what we follow true to that word. We put a huge emphasis in terms of the skills we teach you on clarifying and delivering insight to to, to really clarify the problem to be solved. We also, to that end, in terms of the business side of it and making a case for here's a problem, here's the analysis and, and research behind it before you go on and design to it, uh, in Fortu, you will end up creating a nice book uh, business case to pitch that, uh, which is at a professional business standard. So this is an example uh, from Shane McCann, one of the current fourth year students, and you'll see the visual communication and it's very strong. So when it talks about market analysis as well as the user understanding piece. So in terms of the particular course structure, the course is broken down into three streams of subject technology, marketing and design. You're going to do a number of significant projects uh, and then two final year major projects. And you also go on a six month work placement in third year, or you can do Erasmus exchange uh, where you go to another university in Europe. This is the four year degree. So it's a four year degree. Um, so you can see broadly the yellow indicates science and technology modules, the gray are design and the blue are more uh, marketing and business modules. So you can kind of see how it comes together. And there's some really stand out ones such as that uh, in third year you do ethnography and anthropology. That's the study of people. We've the only anthropology department in the country, in the university. And so it's, we bring that emphasis and that social science emphasis to really unlock that insight uh, in how you, with the skills, how you speak to people. Human computer interaction is designing around interfaces. Um, then we've got societal challenge and service innovation one and two. And both of them talk about service innovation. So the process is the same in terms of understanding the need, but then to execute it, you need skills in uh, different mediums. So for product, we do CAD and physical prototyping. For service, sometimes we do more role play and use different types of prototyping. And for interaction uh, and digital stuff, you will do, you'll use Arduinos and you'll, you'll use uh, some basic prototyping tools for apps and things like that. And then in fourth year, you have a group design project where you team up with someone else in the class and that's a sponsored brief. So this year we, we was with a company called CombiLift, which are a world leading forklift manufacturer based in Ireland. And then in semester two, you do your uh, brief to your own passion and choosing, or maybe it's a job career direction you want to go in. And so this really just gives you a snapshot. I won't linger on it in terms of the different groupings of modules that you learn so you you can see it's it's really an interesting and diverse range of modules so you've a really broad understanding of lots of different things and um, so in terms of your work placement in third year the here's a sample of some of the companies that have taken people on and again you'll see diverse range from supermarket chains musgraves own super value and centra to um, SAP, big software company, to Boston Scientific Medical Device, drinks company in Diageo, Accenture, big business consulting company, Microsoft, and so on. So you can really get a sense and people go into from product and service design and digital design. They also go into some tech marketing roles where they support the team in coming up with new consumer insight um, and, and beyond. It's, it's really interesting to see the different career directions that people take. So there is a process through this, as I've mentioned, and there's many different process models and we'll expose you to a number of them. This is the Stanford one, which is probably the most adopted around the world. So it's a five phase process and it starts with empathizing the, the person you're designing for and you use techniques in that, defining then what they need, generating solutions to that through ideation, building those solutions through prototypes, testing them, and going back around through that cycle of build, test, build, test until you get to a, a really good solution. At that empathy stage, we do get the students in normal circumstances when COVID isn't at play to lay out their research on the wall, to work as a kind of a, 
visible uh, external memory we call it so that they can get cues from different pieces of research when they're in that ideation phase to connect them in interesting ways and so this is an example of one student who was doing a training aid for dogs and it was going to have a built-in technology into a lead that was going to help people train a dog then once you've sort of done your empathy work and you have that when you move into ideation we still do use the, the skills of sketching and we teach a sort of this quick low fidelity type sketching where you kind of capture your idea quickly and move and move and move and and so the idea is then when you look back over them you might circle which ideas had potential uh, and it's it kind of just it facilitates the thought process then you move on as you start to shortlist maybe some of your ideas that you've drawn up you move on to sketch modeling where you start to test elements of the ideas through quick dirty prototypes so card modeling and so for example dyson uh, use card initially to build out uh, early stage concepts for the vacuum cleaners and then you can go on to more expensive prototyping once you've again narrowed in on a particular concept uh, and you might be looking to validate a performance within that so you need to build a you know a clay model of the car if you if you need to test for the performance of aerodynamics or uh, you know etc cetera, etc cetera. 3d printing really comes in well here to build housing for software and like the next stage if you want to make claims is really where you do your test so for example if dyson wishes to make the claim that they're the, they have the best suction vacuum cleaner in the world then they have to verify that and the way that's verified you get a, a roll of carpet that every vacuum cleaner buys from the same mill in switzerland they lay it out to get a piece of a bag of a certain grit they sift that over the top they weigh the carpet before and after and they do a single pass over the top of the vacuum cleaner and whichever vacuum cleaner picks up the most gets to say it has the best suction and that's for, that's how that happens and helmets are tested in a different way and their standards and so on around it so every industry and every product line would have slightly different uh, ways of assessing or of making that claim proving it um the the what i suppose i'm touching on here as well at the end of significant projects we do get students to create these process books which is kind of a really engaging map and story of the phases they went through in creating their solution and so it also speaks to their visual communication ability a bit like the business case report earlier so in terms of the cao entry points and um, it's typically can go up to 400 points so it fluctuates and um, so just strive for you know to get as many points as you can i suppose and then required are maths and one of a, either a science subject or uh, more of an applied science subject such as agricultural science applied mathematics and um, so biology chemistry the traditional sciences obviously computer science is acceptable uh engineering technology construction studies or dcg no third language is required this is the team so we've a great team uh ian who's our head of department is a former bbc executive i'm the program director for this degree um, and mary is a psychologist frank is a successful entrepreneur has owned managed and sold significant businesses uh lindsay is our interaction specialist hci specialist Anthony is a workshop technician guru and really talented craftsman. Trevor is a medical device designer and he's also, you might have seen him on RTE, he's, he's the main big life uh, fix designer and um, we shoot more programs at home so he'll be back on your screen again soon. Uh, Emer is our department administrator and uh, so she's a first point of contact often for you. And Aldo more recently has joined, uh, who comes from an automation engineering background, as well as ergonomics, aesthetics and usability. So some sample projects. It's a studio environment typically. And um, so we also do a lot of industry collaborations in terms of uh, a company will have a particular problem that they want to solve, whether it's, this was for a lighting company with a retrofitable downlight solution. And so we'll liaise and visit the company. This was similar for Britvik, who owned Ballygown, the drinks company, and they're looking at new ways to bring water into the office environment in more aesthetic and also more appealing ways. So like around building them into kind of coffee table solutions 
and allowing for other supplements to be inserted into them through cartridges and things like that. So uh, we've just completed the last mile logistics and Shane uh, participated in that project. Um, and that, yeah, for Combo Lift. Then we've an incredible track record and I'm delighted to announce just yesterday, Shane, who's on the line, won this year's Entrepreneur of the Year uh, for in the university. And that makes us uh, students from this small degree uh, has won it now for seven or eight years in a row. Uh, and not only that, but the top three and four places typically go to this. So that's not only are you ready for product design, but you are ready. If, you, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, this is a great option for you. And this was won a couple of years back that that's won. And this guy uh, very quickly went on to be the head of operations and design for uh, Mucol, which is a, a, a very fast growing, successful innovation company in agri-tech. Um, and so just reflecting on last year is the most recent year that's went, the, these are different award winners from Enterprise Ireland winning and RSA Student Design Award is very interesting. That's a global award um, based out of the UK. And we had uh, winners from this class in that uh, really significant international award. And then here's just a little snapshot of some projects. This was a project, finally a project that one of the students into sports, uh, concussion is a big issue in hurling that's not being looked at. And he identified that rotation of the head is a big problem and not just the impact. So he built, this little retrofitable sensor that goes back onto, onto the back of the hurling helmet. And he actually had it that his program behind it was able to measure and detect. And it, it prompted a light on this. It could tell the ref that this person went beyond a safe rotation and it vibrated to let the player know as well. So it made it easier to identify and maybe take them off for a period of time for a test. Um, and this just gives you a little idea of some of the sketch modeling and the prototypes and the you know, different devices he was working with to make this work. And um, so some RSA awards, this was a one trip keg um, for Diageo because they have an issue when they send their beer out to the US from, from Ireland, they don't have enough beer that needs to come back. So effectively they need to transport back empty kegs, which is expensive. So they wanted the kegs to be able to be convertible into a second life used as a different uh, merchandise product. And so that they won uh, one of the world's big design awards for that. This is another one award winner that was done by a younger group of students in, in our course. Uh, and it was an empathy tool that where for a kid and parent to engage a little bit more. And so the kid could be sent out on a little pirate or a spy mission to find something in the garden. And as they click it, it sends a picture back to the parent's phone. So it was a lovely little engagement tool. Universal Toolkit that was a finalist in James Dyson Design Award and so on. And there's really just loads from furniture to this guy was into sustainability and cycling. So he did a sustainable bicycle. Uh, this lady was passionate about rugby um, and she got a lot of the Irish ladies rugby team to help test because there was, at, this is going back three or four years, no products had been developed. They were basically having to use men's products uh, in terms of Under Armour. And so she you know, identified that as a really great opportunity. This guy was tackling, uh, trying to get young kids to eat uh, more veg and by empowering them to grow it in kitchens and apartments. So he used hydrophonic technology to, to speed up that process to keep the kids engaged, worked really well. Bottle, um, gamifying bottle removal from tables and bars and crushing them and lots more to this. And you can see an example too of, you produce these kind of product boards to go with it and so on Inter interactive showers and building safety and all of it culminate culminates in typically in a big final year show which is a celebration where the industry friends and family come and they see your piece on display like a proper exhibition um, and I suppose this this year last year we've had to resort to a virtual version of this but we will be getting back to this um, providing we've no future pandemics. So that's it. So I'd welcome any of your questions. And also I'd like to maybe pass back to Margaret and Shane, if you want to, I don't know if you want to ask Shane, to speak to something, Margaret. Um, I can just answer any um, admissions questions they might have. Um, there's one question in the chat box, Mark, and I'll just read it out to you. 
How similar is this to the design communication graphics project process? Yeah, have you done the DCG in your time, Shane? I have, yeah. Uh, you so might be better speaking to that then. Uh, I believe it's probably graphic design process. The question is regarding is not Ollie. Um, DCG graphic design. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the the sixth year leave and search DCG project very similar, and it's actually what got me into this course. My DCG teacher put me onto it. Uh, the year I was doing it, we had to learn how to 3D model taps and you did your whole mind mapping and drawing of uh, taps and all that kind of crack. And I took to it really well, really enjoyed it. And my uh, teacher put me on to this course then and that's what set me on to go on and do this. And it's very similar. I like it. It is very similar. A lot of the kind of looking at what already exists, brainstorming what could exist, and then actually enacting on that and making your own concept up is quite similar to the project uh, that you do in DCG. Good. Okay, thank you, Shane. Are there any more questions? You can raise your hand and um, I can um, just well, unmute your mic. Are thinking on questions, Shane, if you wanted to give a bit of a student perspective, or mm -hmm. it could be could be great. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, I got I found out about this course through DCG, and at the time I was also pretty invested in art in Leavenstone as well. So I wanted to figure out: Did I want to do fine art in college? Did I want to do this course that sounded pretty suitable to me because I had kind of interest in sciences and engineering and physics and all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't sure which route I wanted to go. I ended up taking a year out of college and did an art portfolio course in a PLC. And um, that that was massively beneficial because it gave me the option then of doing um, product design in NCAD and doing it in uh, Maynooth or any of the other colleges. Some require a portfolio, some don't. Maynooth being one of the ones that don't require you have an art portfolio necessarily. And um, yeah, I think I'm in the right choice. Like I'm enjoying Maynooth. Uh, one of the things I like about the kind of four years of product design particularly is the fact that you spend a lot of the day-to-day -day course modules in the studio and the studio is it becomes its own little click nearly like you're uh, you're in there surrounded by product designers uh, pretty much your whole time there like you're in some of the bigger 300 400 seat lecture halls as well but the studio is where it has its own kind of post-it notes on the walls and people are constantly drawn going around with spray cans and you actually don't know what people are making in the other room beside you but it's typically a bit of crack um that's quite good. I like that. I like that side of it. It suited my interest to leave in secondary school where I didn't, I knew I didn't want to do business. I knew I didn't want to do X, Y, Z as a kind of strict discipline, but I knew I wanted to kind of look into something that was a bit more varied and more broad skill set. So I think I, I think I ended up getting that out of the course. Yeah. Great. Um, Arian has a question for you, Shane. So I'm just going to allow him unmute his mic. Okay, Arian. Can you just unmute your mic there? I have. I've given you permission there to, but you might have to just unmute it yourself. Nothing's happening there. Yeah. I'll just I'll just go on here. There's some more questions in the box. I see there's uh, one there. Yeah, are there any opportunities to do a master's? Yes. And we do have a master's program called Design Innovation, Masters of Science in Design Innovation, and that is um, that's a very good program. It's it's actually co-delivered with our department, Department of Design Innovation and Anthropology. So we go a little heavier into ethnography into really deep for understanding of people. And that mas masters attracts a really interesting group of people. So we have a number of directors at any one time of large organizations with like Irish Life Director on it at the moment and various can be company owners, so very senior people. Um, and then also you have people who've come straight through from uh, undergrad. 
And so you've got a really love, lovely melting pot of kind of experience that, that benefit both sides. Um, but, you, you know, you get a great network out of it as well. So, yeah, that definitely keep an eye. Look out for that Masters. That Masters actually won the uh, best Masters in the country when it was launched um, six, seven years ago at this stage. Arian, can you try your end to unmute your mic? I've given you permission to unmute. And Hannah. Oh, it's gone. Okay. There are some other. Um, how many places are in the course? Um, we take in just over 40. So okay. but it's around the 40 mark. Okay. And Craig um, Duffy wants to know, uh, what is the marketing module like in the course? You could probably answer that better, Shane. Yeah, so the marketing modules, you do a few of them. You do, um, in second year, you do a marketing module that's pretty extensive to a lot of the stuff that if you were doing a four-year marketing degree, you would cover in more depth, the course. But you definitely get a surface-level understanding of how to read the market, how to forecast trends, how to understand what your project would be in the position compared to all the other products out there and um you get like a lot of toolkits and you become familiar with like frameworks that you can kind of position yourself in and then see what other people are doing um some of the some of the later marketing modules you do are more related to um innovation and how you can kind of meet needs before their needs kind of thing uh, it's it's kind of hard to talk about but if it, it's it's pretty good the marketing the marketing modules there are pretty extensive yeah and uh, you can unmute your mic um now at your end you'd be able to ask a question directly no not working for people unfortunately no i've promoted her to a panelist but she needs to unmute herself mm -hmm. That's, but we, I suppose, to speak on a little bit of what Shane said there, like part of innovation and really, number one, understanding a market need, but then making an innovation happen, bringing it together. The, people talk about it's no longer the sport of, of the lone genius. It's now a team sport. And so you need to be able to speak to different skill sets such as software people such as business and marketing specialists and so you need their language and you need to understand uh, frameworks and, and terms that they're going to use so you can do a certain amount of yourself but part of why we like to give this broad understanding is so that you can be really functional in these multidisciplinary teams which all the big companies kind of want nowadays and um, so it is they the, another thing like companies talk about are sort of t-shaped and pie-shaped people so you've got people who've got a specialism but they want more of people with a specialism which in this case will be product design but then with a, a broad top where they have a broad understanding of lots of the different specialisms and and they're able to talk then pie shape is just where you've kind of got two specialisms and a, a broad top on it so that's the kind of thing that people companies and employers really like nowadays James, do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. Um, we have another question here. Um, will we be using SolidWorks a lot? That's from an anonymous attendee. Yeah, uh, yes, in short, every, oh, um, I think every year of the course and Definitely from second year onwards, you'll be using it every semester. Um, you're being taught SolidWorks if you're asking the question with a bit of fear behind it because you're not very strong at it. Uh, you will be taught SolidWorks. And I went into the course familiar with SolidWorks, but I absolutely hated using it. Um, but you come out the other side and you become more tech literate and you understand more of what you can do with it and then it just becomes like a, a tool like anything else that you can kind of apply um yeah you'll be given you'll be given the groundwork for any of these skills in the course and then you go on and develop them and use them and you just 
you figure out throughout doing that what you start taking a shine to. Yeah. Good. There was one other question, I think, there. How long is the course and how long is the master's? So it's a four year level eight honors degree. Um, so you had four years, you're done and dusted. And then the master's course, there's two options. There's a part-time and full-time. Uh, full-time, you can do it in the year. So there's three semesters. You do a semester in the summer as well. And part-time, you do it over two years. Uh, sorry, Ian, but, the, the, but it, the commitment is like part-time, it's two days every month attendance in the college. So an awful lot of part-timers are holding down proper significant jobs and doing the course in the master's. Whereas with the uh, full-timers, it's every two, it's two days every two weeks. Um, and then of course you're going to have assignments and stuff to be doing around that. So there is, you know, you need to allow for that. Any other questions? It was quicker on the presentation today. It probably seems to take longer, so we have plenty of time if there's anything else. Hannah, um, if you can uh, unmute your mic, you can ask a question. And James, I've given you, I've promoted you to panelists. No. Okay. Let's show you. Do you want to speak a little bit to your project and how you arrived at your final year project? Because that's the project, Shane, that you've just won the entrepreneurship competition for, which yep. which which equals uh, a nice little prize pot of five thousand euros. So this is yep. something we're very proud of. And um, you know, Shane, number one for winning it, and just the, that we're consistently doing well. And so you could speak to that a little bit, Shane, maybe as a point yep. of interest. Yeah, definitely. So um, by the time you're in final year, you have a pretty decent understanding of all the skills you will need going into your uh, going into do the full product development cycle. Um, and you begin it by uh, just identifying over the summer some problems that you uh, you just observe in your day to day. So my girlfriend's grandmother has dementia. So I was interested in how she was providing care to that person with dementia and what some of the difficulties about that were that weren't currently being addressed in their own words. So uh, from my girlfriend's position, it was like, right, what isn't out there that I would love? Going from that, then you start to interview people, you form surveys you do some preliminary reading you do some background reading and um you just start to get a sense of what is what exists what doesn't and what should exist and um from there then you go on and you uh, develop it further you get the, you get the pencils out you start drawing you uh, start playing around with solidworks as some people are terrified of but you uh, you start playing around with that you start making something that might work and you start testing primarily you get uh, you have uh, you take an ocean to something like um my particular one was to combat sundowning which is where people with dementia become very scared at night time because of the sun setting casting shadows they start misunderstanding their environment so my my product has a light in it and i wanted to prototype with that i wanted to test how people with dementia reacted to it how i would react to it in my own bedroom so i slept under a blue bulb for 10 days or something uh, just to see how it would uh, how it would affect my mood and um yeah and it, it, you do you do that kind of work for about 6 weeks in final year where you're constantly taking an assumption you have going off, testing it, documenting what you got out of it, and then building from there. Um, what it ended up in was uh, a full kind of home care situation where you're trying to meet so many small needs that one solution didn't really serve everything. So you wanted to create multiple small solutions 
And in doing that, you're getting rid of A, B, C, D frustrations. And that enables the carer, the day-to-day carer that normally can't get a break to be like, all right, oven's turned off. The lights are in control. This person's asleep. I can go for a walk for an hour. And uh, that's that was that was enough to kind of remedy some of the frustrations I initially identified. Very good. And that, that we're seeing, we see quite a lot, a lot of sort of social good projects, but then they have to like be commercially um, balanced to make a case. And then and then we'll have a fair amount of kind of more obvious um tools and equipment and whatever for for kind of more clear cut tasks and kitchen appliances and all sorts of things so yeah it's such a wide span of uh things that uh it really you can really make it your own yeah absolutely like you go on i only barely talked about the skills you kind of acquire throughout the first three years but like you're literally learning everything from how to how like how to observe a frustration that people have to how to think about that in a different way like yes i see that they're frustrated with that but why are they frustrated and you you can go and every single skill you would need to go from that initial notion to a product on the shelf you'll you'll acquire um that's really quite interesting about the course because it means that any one of those skills would typically be a college course in of itself and you would specialize in maybe distribution if you went on and did marketing you'd maybe specialize in 3d modeling if you did an engineering degree or these kinds of things so in in having a really good foundational knowledge of every skill you'd require to go from a to z you can then decide and realize throughout your four years in the course that like i actually prefer this two or three skill sets and then start taking control and taking the steps to doing that as your expert subject as a career. Okay, we have another question here from Ali asking, what are the hours a week like? In other words, I suppose, class contact. Could you, could you answer that first, Shane? Yeah, so if my memory is right, you have about 18 hours a week in first year. It might be slightly less. Um, and that isn't to say that you do all your work in the classroom. If anything, it's the opposite. You are receiving information in the classroom, but then you have to go off and draw and you have to go off and research and all this kind of stuff. So in terms of like hours committed per week, I think you probably spend less time in a classroom than if you did a science degree, but you're still doing about 30 to 40 hours a week of work um, just to kind of keep things taken over and learning a lot of the information yourself um yeah so it's about it's about 18 hours a week i think if i again if i remember properly in first year and that doesn't really drop too much until final year i think the final year timetable is about 10 hours of lectures a week or so and uh well needless to say final year you're a bit busier so yeah you're just doing big projects so yeah there's a lot of independent kind of work yeah stu- studio work though so you, you're still in using the workshop in yeah the oh yeah absolutely yeah. like uh you'll be very familiar with anthony by the end of your course because you'll have spent nearly three days straight in the studios uh just getting a hand building your final prototypes and also yeah they the timetable in a way could be a little bit misleading it's probably a fair fair comment on it yeah we we generally think it's kind of it's similar comparable to engineering degree commitment like people often associate quite a high commitment to those subjects and and to be honest it it is exactly as Shane said not necessarily that you've got the same level of contact hours but the the sort of workload is similar overall yeah like uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't be given four hours of blank studio time just to do drawings you wouldn't be afforded that necessarily it would be more go off and do your five drawings of homework in first year um and then you come back and yeah but it's it's large mostly continuous assessment so it is kind of project so it's kind of it's not you're not sort of it's a different dynamic you're you know 
there's going to be some modules that aren't going to be your cup of tea, but plenty of them are going to have nice projects that you can get into and you probably don't feel the work or the time you're putting into it uh, as much as as you would, you know, if you were putting 10 hours into a subject, maybe you, that was sort of setting up for an exam or something like that. It goes by quick. And it's, yeah, yeah, definitely. We have another question in. What was work experience like in your third year? Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Um, I worked in ESB, which is not maybe the first thing you think of when you think of doing a design degree to go off and work in uh, an old school el electricity company. But um, what you're maybe not expecting is that the skills you're learning in this design degree are highly transferable into kind of strategy and stuff in business terms. So ESB are quite forward thinking. Now I call it them old school, but they're quite forward thinking. They have internal kind of design thinking workshops that they would run. They have like internal competitions. And naturally enough, they want to kind of amend some climate disaster stuff. So they're fully willing to try any tools that might necessarily come up with a good idea to help solve that. So um, I got to work with ESB and specifically I got to work in their innovation academy where I would be given workshops alongside other staff and develop out a, an innovative solution to a problem that was kind of internal in the company. Uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, I got to work with HR a lot and uh, the CSR department. So CSR is corporate social responsibility it's basically when a company is so big that they get a tax break and are indebted to the Irish government to be charitable so they have a certain fund that they have to keep that will help the people in their community so I got to work with the CSR team and that's that's quite an interesting one because it, it isn't necessarily drawing a solution to that but they're still using these creative design thinking processes to approach the problem and uh, hopefully find a solution to it. Okay, any more questions for Shane or Martin before we end the call? Yeah. And uh, I'll just say more on that other work experience question. So I went off into a quite business centric one. That isn't to say that you can't do a more traditional project product placement like some people will go into lighting they'll go into furniture one of my best friends in the course went on to work with a I guess they're called a tanner someone who works with leather the whole time so he was making watch straps and designing wallets and all that kind of stuff and learning how to run a small business they're like your placement can be anything early do you know because you learn such a broad skill set brilliant I think we have another question. Um, how to fill RPEI form for the Masters in Marketing program for non-EU student? Uh, RPEI, what's RPEI form for MSc in Marketing? Is that Marketing and in Innovation? Um, I think you need to contact, if you're not an, an EU student, you would have to enter through um, our international office. So um, you could drop them an email with your question, just international.office at mu.ie. Brilliant. Just typed that address. Yeah. So I suppose a lot of them are coming directly out of secondary school and are kind of gone to this open day to kind of explore which college to necessarily pick. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you touched on it, Martin, with the ethnography and anthropology modules. That was eventually what won me over to pick Minut over NCAD was because with the work placement, which you don't typically do in NCAD unless it's a teaching placement. And um, 
with the anthropology modules, you don't get to learn the social sciences. Those were probably the most important things I learned in this course, maybe. Uh, the social sciences, definitely learning how to interview people was a massive one, absolutely massive. And uh, it sets probably, it sets Minute apart from other product design courses. Okay, and there's another question here, Shane. Um, what kind of jobs do people go into after the course? Oh, everything, 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 everything. Graphic design, UI, UX, making apps, making furniture, lighting, painting, branding, marketing, anything. Um, yeah, like I, there's no one answer I can give you other than the only thing they're probably not going into is to be like a doctor. <laughs> Like, okay. but that, even that being said, you'd end up making medical devices or something. Last year, we had a medical doctor on the master's course. So, which yeah, is exactly. interesting because they, and that is, that's a prominent thing. Like, I know Trevor does a lot of work with the HSE training doctors and in innovation. So, you're, you're right. You don't, you, but, but actually, the hospitals and that now are looking for these sort of innovation roles, um, which is interesting. You know, because they need to be innovative too, and how do they the med, new medical devices? There's ample opportunities, and the sur working with those surgeons is uh, is really good opportunity. The surgeons are very interested to develop better techniques for doing a particular type of surgery that yeah, isn't absolutely. available, and so on. And then even the kind of like patient care side of stuff, the bedside manner uh, interviews yeah. that doctors now have to do. That was all. That all came about by interviewing patients and what they found most frustrating about uh, the hospitals. So it's, it's design thinking right there. Like, process, yeah. So, and I hope that kind of answered your question in that almost anything, like really almost anything, um, it kind of, because you're exposed to so much, you have more opportunities to figure out what you want to do long term and ultimately your exposure to disciplines that you might learn that you don't like will still benefit you in that you can at least talk about them if it comes up in your job later on and um, you pick the ones you want to specialize in and you'll have apt tools to go off and have a career from it. I think that's all the questions. Any more questions before we end the webinar? Just type them into the box. Okay, I think that's it then. Thank you all very much for attending the webinar. And thank you very much to Martin and to Shane for all the insightful advice and for the um, great um, presentations they did. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so I'll just end the call now. Good. And you can go to some of the other talks. Okay, bye bye.